Alright guys, we're in the shop with Wes and Tanner from Pro Tree. And we are going to show you the right way to sharpen a chainsaw blade. These guys run a tree service. They know how to do it. And we're gonna show you the two typical ways. We're gonna go through a bench grinding and hand filing. So we this took us a while to really master the art of. You just you have to practice it. It's it's getting out there, it's sharpening your chains, and it's cutting with your saws. And you have to do both of those things repeatedly to master. It's an art. What are some of the indicators besides not your chain not going through the log? So some of these guys are gonna be going, oh well, how do I know when my chain needs to be sharpened? Besides that, where you get to the point where it's so obvious and you're blowing smoke, can you tell by the chips at all when your chain needs to be sharpened? Yeah, I mean, you want, you want it to throw nice, long shavings, okay? Yes. Not sawdust, right. not little chips, long, curly shavings. Okay. Um, a lot of like professional loggers and you know, a lot of guys will, they'll sharpen their saw every tank of gas. Okay. And all you have to do is one stroke with the file, it takes, you know, you use a stump vise, so like if you're out in the field, this is a really good tool to have. This is called a stump vise here. You take it and you pound it into a stump and then you tighten your chainsaw bar right into it. If you're like a professional tree company, mounting a vise on the back of your truck is a good idea. Okay. On the tailgate or on the fender of a trailer. These are really cheap, I don't know, maybe five, ten bucks. You can get them almost anywhere. But you just screw that in the end of your bar, you'd hit it on the head with a mallet. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna like that's gonna hold your 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 chainsaw and your bar in place. Okay. So you can you can file a good edge on it. This is the raker. Okay, show me your top bar. This is a gullet right here. The gullet, yep. This is the tooth. That's the tooth. Yep. So this is the edge you're gonna wanna be checking. That's the edge you check. Yeah, right there. That's what's gonna be doing the cutting. The more you sharpen. The, this tooth actually goes down in the back, so it gets lower towards the back, in which you keep sharpening this, you're gonna have to adjust your depth gauge by with a flat file. So you say you sharpen this four times, you can check it right here, and you can just run a flat file on here. So if your raker gets above your tooth, it's not gonna be cutting as good. Or what happens, if you take your raker down too far, mm -hmm. all your saw is gonna do is just bite and stop. So there's a really fine line. What's the point to the raker then if it's not cutting? The raker, if you didn't have the raker there, all it'd do is bite. It's a depth gauge basically is what the raker is. So basically the wood would come right here and just get a little shaving taken off. If you didn't have any of those, a piece of wood would just come and go right in the tooth. You won't be able to cut. That's why if someone were to take a flat file and shave your raker down too far, all your saw is gonna do is bite and catch. Bite and catch? Yup. So it would just stop. And kick back more kick and back. be more aggressive. He's That's how one finger Frankie got his nickname. It's story time with Stan. This is no lie. One finger Frankie, this is the story. He took the rakers down. Too on, far? He took the, because he likes a real aggressive saw. Yeah, if you know how to run one, but well, that's not the safe way to do it. So, and then on top of it, he's running that my Echo, which he loves my Echo saws. Yeah. You love my Echo yep. saws. Tanner's an Echo fan. Echo top handle, you love them, right? Yep. So he got real aggressive with his rakers, took those down, and he was holding a log with one hand, getting cocky, because he's done it for 40, well he's 57, so uh -huh. he's been doing it for probably 45, 50 years. Cutting, after he just took the rakers down and wasn't expecting the bite, and it grabbed that log. Pulled it back. Pulled it back while he's holding it. <laughs> one finger Frank. It happened, no, it could be worse. Don't take your rakers down. Too far, so you need those yep. to be about the same as yeah, and that's where a depth gauge would come in handy. Okay. So with the depth gauge, that's your raker. Yep. You would put it right here. Well, I'll do it on this one. Uh, that one right there. You put yeah, it right you know there. You should do Tanner. Just keep moving it around because it's not hard for me to focus or nothing. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Let me, let, let me find my. Focus. Let me find. All right, go for it. Got it. So you tape, take the depth gauge. Yep. Put it there so you can see the raker in that pocket, and you would take the flat file. How do you set the depth gauge though? The depth gauge sits on top of the tooth. So it sits on that tooth and this tooth. Oh, so you're taking the raker down. You're not taking the tooth down well, at this, this point. This is adjusting the raker. So what you would do is you, and, and you do it in order. You would sharpen the tooth first. Okay. And then you would adjust your rakers. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now that flipping makes more sense. And it took me 11 minutes and 13 seconds of filming to figure that out. Do you want to get it out of <laughs> If I'm going to sit here and sharpen a chain, first thing I do is you want to mark your starting point on each side. You're going to start on this side and you're going to be basically skipping every other. And then you got to turn the whole chain around and start on the other side. Oh, because the teeth yep. are flip flops. Yep. And you're, you, I mean, you got to sharpen like this way. I mean, you can't go back this way. There's a certain grain, you can't, and with sharpening, you can only push. So when I'm sitting here sharpening, you wanna follow that angle, that's what that's for. They have guides for this and everything, but you sit here and just. So you, see, what file are you using? Does that matter? I'm just using an Oregon hand file, and it there's different sizes for different chains. Do you have to match that up? Yeah, so. If you're gonna buy one, there's charts for them. So how I use it, I line it up. I've been doing it long enough to where I don't need a guide. I just sit here, I have my finger here. You don't want it any angle, you want it level. And to follow the angle on your top plate. And I just sit here and you don't need a ton of pressure. And you can't flip flop it. Nope, every other. And one or, well, you want to do this pretty much the same amount. They say you want to do the same amount of swipes on every tooth, but in theory, you should be taking out the same amount of metal, if that makes any sense. Yes. So you could be pushing really hard on one and light on the other. You just, you got to pay attention and you want to, so you could, it depends on how dull it is. So I could sit here, this isn't very dull. Say three swipes on every one. At the bottom of the gullet, you don't want to sharpen that. You want to sharpen the back and the top plate of the tooth. So you don't want to sharpen. You, you don't want to sharpen down here, okay? That doesn't do any cutting. You want to sharpen the back and the top plate of the tooth. So you have to apply pressure with the file against against the back of the tooth. You want to be kind of pushing like this direction and up a little bit. And some guys will even, I like to twist the file to, a little bit. You don't need to twist it. That's all, well with these files it already has swirls in it. I guess they get, see this is why I don't do this anymore. That's why I'm not allowed to do this. I guess I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> so, it's, so what you were saying Tanner is the file itself it has swirls, so you don't need to sit there and twist. And what I do, every time, every couple teeth, I'll sit here as I'm filing that, and then kind of hit off, get that metal out of there, because you don't want to get a bunch of metal build up in there. And okay. these files only last so long. You can't just keep the same file and sharpen 100 chains. They usually say every three times you'd have to adjust the depth gauge or raker. Okay. So you, should check, you should check the depth of your rakers every time. You know, there's two ways to do it. The way with the, the tool that they sell, you set that on top and you just run your flat file over it. So there's a little bit of a hang up there, so that needs to be brought down. The way I like to do it is I like to look right down the nose of the bar yep. and you can see the top of the depth gauge or the raker. Mm -hmm. And then you, you want to just barely be able to see the bottom of the top plate. Dull, 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 dull. Sharp, sharp. That's half of them. We, well, we like to spend time cutting trees, not sharpening <laughs> chains, you know? It don't pay to sharpen chains. So. So this speeds the process up. And if you can, you know, if you're doing a lot of wood cutting, uh -huh. it, it's worth the investment. They're about 600 bucks, but this really speeds the process up. Okay, so you, you see how he's got, mm -hmm. he's laid that in. 
I can see. Okay. So oh, that, that, so what this thing does is you can set it in there, pull it back, and then when this comes off, oh, wrong to it. I want to do it so you guys can see. You got to set the uh, set the grinder depending on the, what the chain is specified for. So right now Tanner's setting it this chain spec to be sharpened at a 30 degree angle. So that's what he's setting his grinder for. Right here. Okay, so can you see right there? Mm. So it says 30 degree angle, so 0, 10, 20, 30. So you set the grinder at a 30 degree angle. Yep. That chain needs a 30 degree angle. Yep. Okay. And it's just like sharpening by hand. You do 30 and you skip every other on this side. Then when you're done with the whole side, you'll eventually switch and set it to 30 degrees and do the other side. Okay. So it's important though, the big mistake that these guys can, the guys can make with this machine is they can blue your tooth. So what a blue tooth is, it means the tooth got too hot and you'll actually look at it and it'll be like a bluish purple and that just means they held the wheel on there too long. So it's not like a game of just, you don't just apply as much pressure as you possibly can. Um, you'll see Tanner here in a second, he just kind of, he feathers it. He uses two fingers and he literally just bounces this cutting wheel off the tip of the tooth and takes as much, as little metal as he can out. Right. Yeah. So another important piece is you want to make sure that all your teeth, the top plate of the teeth is all the same length. So but the first step that Tanner is going to do when he sharpens the chain is he's going to go through on this chain and identify his worst tooth. So the one that's in the worst condition, if it was damaged, if it was hand filed and, and it needs to, you know, he's going to get all of his angles set right. So when you set it, there's two adjustments. Right here, you crank this back, and you want to set it so you just barely take off any metal. I'm hitting the top of the tooth right now. Yep. You would have to turn this back until you just are barely on that tooth, until it goes in there. So it slides right in. Yep. So once you get that, okay. there's another adjustment back here, so you don't go all the way into the gullet. So you set this, and then you set your depth right there. So you set it once, and you can sharpen every, the rest of the teeth on that, but the, the key thing is to get that first one just right. Yeah. Because you can wreck a chain. If mm -hmm. you do the first one wrong... If you have them all different sizes, it's going to cut crooked, it's not going to cut right at all. Let's get a safety Google on. There's the first one, skip one. done with that whole side what you do rotate it back to 30 on the other side time that up and then switch teeth tell you're kind of going by feel too you're yep. not just bouncing every one you don't want to hold it on there you just want to barely touch it because you don't want to burn that tooth so do you sharpen chains at the end of every day tanner or usually you... every monday every monday and then i stack them up so tanner correct me if i'm wrong but when you blew the tooth yep. as you call it doesn't that mean the heat treat is ruined so it's not hardened to the correct. Yup, and that usually bluing it, the tooth would be harder than mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be. But more brittle. Yup, and that would also that do two things and make it too hard and brittle, and it would be harder to hand file. Mm -hmm. So if you ever if you go from this to hand filing and you have a blue tooth 
good luck. You're not mm -hmm. going to be able to try. All right, you guys. A big thanks goes out to Wes and Tanner for helping make this video because without their help, this would not have been possible because I'm not qualified to sharpen a chainsaw. And I sure as heck wasn't going to have one finger Frankie tell you guys how to sharpen a chainsaw after what he did to himself. So you guys let me know what you think of videos like this. What I like to do is find people that know a heck of a lot more about something specifically or in particular and bring their expertise into it and you tell me. You like videos like this? Because if you do, well I'll do more, but more importantly, what do you guys want to see? What other kind of things should I bring you? You guys, comment down below. And as always, hey, check these videos out right here, guys. And as always, God bless and go get them, you guys.